Hey everybody, thank you very, very much for joining me for Amazon Sellers Breaking News. My name is CJ Rosenbaum, one of the founding partners of Rosenbaum Familaro, the law firm behind AmazonSellersLawyer.com, the largest depository of free information for Amazon sellers anywhere on earth. And I don't say that lightly. We've searched high and low and I have not found any website. Jenny, thanks for joining me. Any website anywhere that has even a, a fraction of the content that we have for Amazon sellers. Six books, dozens of webinars, thousands of pages of articles, all available for free for Amazon sellers. So please check out our website, amazonsellerslawyer.com. And let me get started with today's breaking news of Tuesday, August 27, 2019. Okay, today's news is gonna be talking about, is Amazon's 30-day notice real under the new contract? IP complaints, inauthentic suspensions, and inauthentic reinstatements, okay? So stay for the very, very end. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is whether or not this 30-day notice from Amazon that was in the news, whether it is actually real or, or if it's not real. Okay, first news story today, IP complaints. According to Jason Tinchula and our team, and Jason is a tremendous asset to our team here, former Navy guy, joined us years ago, couldn't be happier with him. We're talking about what is the breaking news today. He's like, this is his quote. IP cases are the new layup. IP cases, intellectual property right cases, are the new layup, meaning we are winning these cases left and right. We're winning them by getting retractions. We're winning them at notice dispute. We're winning them at seller performance, okay? And as we talked about in the news yesterday, spoof email complaints, we're also winning those. So here's the breaking news. Getting retractions of baseless IP complaints, either we are just fantastic at it or it's getting easier than ever, but the brands are realizing that their IP complaints are baseless and they are withdrawing them. So if you're not able to persuade them, get a lawyer. If you don't know a lawyer who knows both intellectual property law and Amazon intimately, call us. Okay, that's what we do every single day of the week. We are not doing anything else other than helping Amazon sellers. When it comes to spoof email complaints and the email gets kicked back to you, take screenshots. You need to decide whether you're gonna to go to seller performance or notice dispute or a combination or timing the two. That's what we are doing and it's working. Uh, Vin Famalaro and our team is a tremendous, tremendous paralegal. Um, he goes to both simultaneously, where he's going for the retractions and also reaching out to notice dispute simultaneously. And also, you guys know the trend, the 72-hour notices combined with IP complaints are just continuing to uh, continuing to grow in, in the, the how many times we're seeing these things. So that's a bad thing coming out of Amazon, but the good news is uh, that maybe they assign more people to deal with these issues but we are getting reinstatements faster and faster. Also, if you have been falsely accused of selling counterfeit, okay? Not unauthorized, unauthorized, not dealing with distribution agreements, but specifically accused of selling counterfeit products when you certainly did not, either because your products are genuine or because you never sold any products, you have leverage over that complainant through the legal theory of defamation or defamation per se. And I'm gonna repost a video that I did with Travis Stockman, one of our lawyers here, about seller's rights under defamation when you have been falsely accused of selling counterfeit products. Okay, so that's the latest and greatest information when it comes to IP complaints. IP complaints, IP reinstatements are the new layup. Thank you, Jason Timchula. Okay, second breaking news story has to do with inauthentic listing suspensions and inauthentic account suspensions. Inauthentic is all about providing invoices, providing receipts, providing documentation as to where you source your products from, writing a concise, well-documented plan of action that is persuasive. And the breaking news when it comes to inauthentics is that retail receipts are working quickly, okay? Now, a lot of people had reported that this was dead. You can't use retail receipts. That is absolutely incorrect. Retail receipts work. We're seeing a much faster turnaround in getting reinstatements, 
by using retail receipts to back up our plans of action. And the more detailed they are, the better. The, the, more, the easier it is to track your retailer back to the manufacturer, the better. So breaking news, retail receipts are working faster than ever, or not fat, faster than they have recently when it comes to dealing with inauthentic listing suspensions and inauthentic account suspensions. That's really, really good news for sellers. Okay, third breaking news story. Is Amazon's 30-day notice to sellers before a suspension actually real? Your new contract with Amazon has been imposed on you, okay? You are living and working under new terms, okay? It's called the Business Solutions Agreement. It used to be hidden in the defini definition section. Now you can find it by clicking the terms and conditions. That is your contract with Amazon. Every single plan of action that's being written, it has to be written by someone who knows this contract intimately. So the 30-day notice is in the contract. It's written there, only it's written right before three gigantic loopholes. And we've shot a video, and I'm going to be publishing it, I hope, today, about specifically this paragraph of the new business solutions agreement. There's also a provision for a seven-day notice to cure. Cure is a legal term that means to fix the problem. It also has absolutely enormous loopholes. And I'm gonna go through a couple of loopholes today, but our video on this specific provision is like 20 minutes long. So I'm just gonna go over a couple of them today in breaking news. One of the loopholes is whether or not Amazon thinks that you are in material breach of your contract with Amazon. Now material breach is not defined by Amazon, but Amazon reserves unilateral discretion to kind of do what they want. And what material breach generally relies upon in the law is that it's material, meaning it breaches a substantial portion of the agreement versus an insignificant portion of the agreement. A material breach is meaningful, immaterial would be rather meaningless, even though it violates the terms of the contract. Another huge loophole is risk to Amazon with no definition of what risk is. So is the risk of a consumer returning their product and Amazon having to refund $9.99 of your money, is that a risk to Amazon? I don't know, but the phrase in the agreement, risk to Amazon negates its obligation to give you 30 days notice. That is a huge loophole. Another huge loophole Amazon built into it is risk to consumer. Any risk of all, it's undefined. So is it a risk the product might not work? Is it a risk to people or property? We don't know, it is just another huge loophole. And if you wanna find out the details, please watch our video on paragraph three, the 30 day notice provision. Also, Amazon has included the word fraud. If it accuses you of fraud, it reserves the right not to give you notice and to just simply suspend as it's done for years and years and years. So the 30 day notice provision is in the new contract, but Amazon has built in tremendous loopholes for itself, and we're gonna see how it pans out. On a positive note, the way the contract is written, it has also created lots of arguments for Amazon sellers to make in your plans of action, in your appeals, in your Bezos escalations, why Amazon staff in Hyderabad and Bangalore should reinstate your account. So there's a lot of good stuff in that contract, there's also a lot of negative, and there's also a lot of it that is the same. Now, a couple of things I wanna talk about at the end. If you are a private label seller and you're watching this trade war and you're concerned, you have to look for other places to source your products. Please check out indiasourcingtrip.com. indiasourcingtrip.com. I'll be going to India in a few weeks and it's a remarkable country to source textiles, leather goods, handicrafts, anything made with dye, and tons and tons of other products. So check out indiasourcingtrip.com. Also, if you're learning anything, if you're finding these news broadcasts useful, please like this video, please share this video, and I will see you again tomorrow for Amazon Sellers News. Thank you.